Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Inner Sanctum. Yes, the Inner Sanctum of SportsNot.com, your favorite sports website in the whole world. I know it is. Even if you're visiting those other ones, it doesn't matter. Come back to us. Come back to Sports Not. We're here for a special new feature, a new series of videos called Inside the Press Box. Yes, you're coming inside. You get to meet a lot of folks. You'll, you'll recognize a lot of us, obviously, because you see videos coming out from all sorts of folks at SportsNot.com. But what we wanted to do is we wanted to get together our editorial writing staff and talk about some of the hottest subjects in the sports world. And we're going to stay focused for the next few episodes on the NFL. As we come to the end of the NFL season, Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas, we uh, want to focus on some of those things. And to do that, we are uh, going to uh, introduce everybody here in the room that you're watching. And that is uh, starting with the gentleman next to me uh, on my left or on my right, if you're watching on the screen, Matt Johnson. He's an NFL writer, editor at SportsNot.com. He is also a huge Steve Jobs fan, as you can tell from his black shirt. So there he is. Matt, thanks for being with us, buddy. Thanks so much. He's your most huge, <laughs> the biggest, biggest Steve Jobs fan in the world. I love it. Time. Even though he's rocking an Android phone. No, I'm kidding. Um, and then <laughs> <laughs> next to him, I'm an Android. <laughs> ne next to him in the in the Brady Bunch squares here, we have Ryan Dyrude, who you could also catch with me on the Not Zone each week on Wednesdays. He is the founder of the LA Football Network. He's still working on his tan because he can. The rest of us don't live in those warm weather environments. Ryan, thanks for being with us. It's going to be fun, man. Always, always a blast. And <laughs> good to be with the Brady Bunch, I guess, as we're called. So that's great. That's right. That's right. Now we go to the bottom row. We go to the big cheese here in the room. That is our NFL managing editor, David Cool, who has been working diligently on a song related to our first subject. But that's all I can say. David, thanks for being with us here on Inside the Press Box. Absolutely. I mean, if I'm the big cheese, does that mean I'm Greg Brady in the Brady Bunch squares? <laughs> That's right. That's right. And playing Marsha is Jason Barton. Burgos. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No footballs to the nose for Jason. Jason is our editor extraordinaire. This is the guy who at Sports Knot has the uncanny knack to always find the just like the biggest trending story out there and jump on it for us. So, Jason, we're glad to have you here, man. Yeah, you know, I'm disappointed. I'm not a founder. I'm not a big cheese. I'm not an <laughs> app creator, but I'm still happy to be here. There you go. See, you're, we're, we're all, we're good. We're here. We're having fun. And so that's what we're doing. And I am Scott Colbranson. Uh, I am going to hopefully keep these guys in line before they kill each other. Luckily, they can't reach through the boxes. Uh, but no, I kid. We all, we all get along and, and have a lot of fun together every day. Mm -hmm. But we're going to talk about a subject right now that I know everybody in here is just dying to talk about. And that is one of the hottest stories in the NFL. It has nothing to do with football. It has nothing to do with a player in the NFL. Well, sort of. It has nothing to do with a coach, a team. It actually has to do with one Miss Taylor Swift, the largest pop star, some say the largest celebrity in the entire world. We have seen over the course of this football season, clearly, the fact that, uh, that, Miss, <laughs> that Miss Swift has become a fascination uh, for the league. And I want to read some numbers out to you guys to start this discussion because we're going to ask the question, is Taylor Swift good for football? Is she good for the NFL? What we found here, this comes from the New York Post, uh, coming from some studies which show that uh, Taylor Swift has helped drive big bucks to the NFL with 16% of U.S. shoppers admitting, this is admitting, so there's some guy out there who's 50-some years old who's not admitting. He's probably in this number, too. Uh, admitting the pop star influenced them to spend cash on football in the walk-up to Super Bowl uh, 58. Not only that, that means 333 million Americans, <clears throat> according to the latest census data, of course, some 53 million of them spent money on Swift and the Chiefs because she's dating Travis Kelsey from the Chiefs. So you look at that. And it also is not a surprise. Gen Zers were most likely to say Swift influenced their football-related card charges, according to Lending Tree, with 39% of the 11 to 20, 11 to 26-year-olds in the generation admitting that her tour and her coerced her into making the football decision. So they are saying that the reason, guys, that they are getting into football and and spending their money on football has to do with Taylor Swift. Now, I ask you, that's all great and dandy in numbers. Clearly, the NFL is making money off it. But uh, I'm going to go to you first, David, and I'm going to ask you, 
Uh, is this good for the NFL? Is this good for football fans in general? Uh, do you care? W what do you think? I think you answered your own question. But with all those numbers that you threw out there, it's obviously good for the NFL. I mean, if they're making money off this, yeah, absolutely she's good for the NFL. She's drawing. She's also driving viewership to all their games. If you see the numbers for the Chiefs games, they're through the roof right now. They're drawing more uh, viewership than they do for any other game but the Super Bowl so far. And then – here we have the Super Bowl coming up, and who knows what the numbers will be after that. But she's driving – what she's doing right here is she's making NFL even more mainstream than it already is, meaning she's driving non-NFL fans to the NFL. And what could be better than that for the NFL? It's, it's ching-ching for them. <laughs> yes, geez, the NFL cares about money? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, Matt, I'm going to – Matt, I'm going to go to you next. Um, I need a, I need somebody here to to tell me that it's not good. Maybe maybe I don't. But but what's your take on all of this and the fact that not only is it obviously made money for the NFL and probably Taylor Swift, uh, we know the number of Travis Kelsey jerseys have gone up uh, as far as the sale goes, and, and that partly probably goes with the fact that that the Chiefs are winning. But I, I want to hear from you. What do you think of this whole fascination with somebody who has nothing to do with the sport? Yeah, it's so interesting. You know, one of the many angles of it is one – the revenue, the money for this is NFL's goal is by 2030 to make 25 billion in revenue per year. Thanks to Taylor Swift, they're going to be a lot closer to that moving forward. <laughs> and you also talk about, you know, the ability to reach younger demographics. Major mm. League Baseball is failing to do this. The NBA is failing to do this. The NFL, thanks to Taylor Swift, has found a way to build that audience, an audience they probably never thought they would reach because of this. And just to be able to have that, and you know, I know people are going to complain. There's been plenty of, oh, I'm so tired of seeing her. But guess what? The NFL sees it as a money-making opportunity. And for so many other people, think about how many fans Taylor Swift has. Mm. To see her on that television screen, it lights them up. It brings them joy. And importantly for the NFL, it keeps them plugged into the game. So, you, you know, whether it's CBS, NBC, or the NFL, you can't blame one at all. Yeah, it's it's incredible. I mean, there are people, and I've seen stories of fathers with with especially with young daughters who say, you know what? For the first time, my daughter asked if she if she could sit down and watch the football game with me. So, Jason, I mean, is there is there a downside here? Do you do you see any downside? No, no, there's no downside. I mean, in in in, in, the, in the end, it's America. Greed is good. It's a capitalist <laughs> society. We want to make that money. Um, I think the only thing in the end is is. The NFL probably doesn't need her. I mean, it's the most popular sport in North America, makes tons of money. They probably still make – just create money on their own without her. Uh, I think it, what it, it shows you that people love love. Uh, that's why we see it mm. in all our movies, especially in Marvel movies and all those kind of popular things. And I'm sure like the NBA sitting there going, man, can we get like Ice Spice and John Morant together or something? Can we get something <laughs> like that for ourselves? Because, man, look at the money because that's who really needs it. They, the NBA and, and Adam Silva is probably hoping that Kelsey and, and, and Taylor fail. And then somebody like Lori Markkinen can start dating her. And then they can get that some of that money. I think that's what it is. Is it necessary? <laughs> probably not. <laughs> I love how you got your Marvel reference in there. Of course, we can see your, of course. <laughs> uh, your, your Funko Pops behind you, which is awesome. And uh, Ryan Dyrud, you're the guy in L.A., right? I mean, the one thing is, and I think that fans often forget about this as, as far as being like hardcore football fans, and that is the NFL before it's not, a, it's not a sports business. It is an entertainment business. And this plays into them. And, and does she, does she supplant Carrie Underwood as the singer for Sunday night football? Ooh, throwing a curveball at me there. <laughs> uh, maybe, I mean, I don't, maybe they do a duet. I mean, maybe it's oh. where they, they do a, a together thing. I mean, I'm shocked. She's not singing at the Super Bowl if she wasn't on the Eras tour. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely, <laughs> So I don't need to speak on more what everyone said. Uh, it's great for the NFL. It's great for the sport. It's great for American sports. Um, it allows my wife of six and a half years to actually have, you know, interest when she hates football because it's my whole life outside of her and my <laughs> daughter. And now she's like, yeah, I'll, I'll crap open a, a Coors Light and watch a, a, a game if Taylor's on. So it gives some, uh, some balance back to our home lives where our, our wives can rejoin us and kind of to Jason's point that he kind of, I don't think he stole from me, but I was going to say, I wouldn't be surprised if next year, you know, Oliva, Oliva Rodrigo is dating an NFL player and they're trying to get all these pop stars all sprinkled throughout the league. So they have more than just one city audience and they can spread it out. Yeah. And what's interesting too, and I want to open this up to everybody uh, in the group today, <laughs> which is um, clearly, and, and, and I agree, look, I, I don't listen to Taylor Swift 
I have an older daughter. My younger kids are boys. They don't listen to Taylor Swift. Uh, but I understand it, right? I understand the the popularity and what she's done and what she's been able to do. And I respect her from the standpoint of not only as a businesswoman, but also as a songwriter because she writes her own stuff, whether I listen to it or not. So you like that, but you look at the situation too, and you look at what she's what she's been able to do to get people more interested in football. Now, are we going to start to see, because of the Taylor Swift um, phenomenon in the NFL, are we going to see maybe some of this concocted relationships or try to get more of these types of celebrities from adjacent entertainment uh, to be involved? Now, we've always had that with the Super Bowl, which is coming up, right? We have that. The halftime show has always been a big deal. But remember, early days of Hollywood, the studios would have people date in public. They weren't really dating. They would do it all for promotional. Matt, do you see that maybe happening? Absolutely. You know, one reason, because this is also great for players like you, Travis Kelsey, New Heights podcast, number one sports podcast in the world right now. It's beating even in Mexico. It's beating uh, soccer podcasts. Wow. So when you talk about what this can do for, for pro athletes, it's like it's a win win for everyone. Taylor's growing her audience. Travis is growing his audience. Everyone is winning from this. The NFL is winning for this. Listen, the ultimate love story for everyone is money, and everyone is happy for this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> David, what about you? What's your what's your thoughts on where where does this go next because of Taylor's? Because it's not going to just stop with her. There's got to be the NFL's got to be sitting there because Matt's right. The NFL's watching this and saying, "Wow, look at the impact this has." How do we grow? Because that's what any business has to do, right? Is they see something, and you constantly have to grow or you die. Yeah, let's have some gatherings, I guess, where we bring celebrities and NFL players together and see what, see where the sparks may fly. <laughs> speed you know? dating, speed yeah, dating. Do some kind of dating thing. Uh, I, I don't know how you do that, you know, because, you know, you don't want concocted relationships necessarily. But but if there were some other ones out there that you could you could take advantage of, I, I think that they would probably look to do that. Although, you know, I'm, I'm not sure I'm a big fan of that approach necessarily, because, you know, in the end here, what you have is you have a football player dating who happens to be dating a celebrity. And it's, it's really in a lot of ways no different than any other boyfriend, girlfriend thing. The girlfriend just happens to be high profile. She's showing up to support her guy. And I, I don't see any issue with that at all. But there may be some other uh, relationships out there that the, the NFL hasn't tapped into yet because they don't know about them. Yeah, no, it's interesting, and I think I think Jason, you look at you look at you talked about some of the other kind of uh, celebrity right in the NFL. I mean, you had Russell Wilson and Sierra. She's a pretty, I mean, she's not obviously as big as Taylor Swift has become, but this is nothing new. We even did a story up on Sports Not about this, right? Uh, and a tear talk. The guys, uh, our guy Dawson, did that up uh, a video talking about this because this is, I mean, you know, celebrity kind of attracts celebrity. And so we're going to see it, but I wonder too if if it brings kind of more relationships to light that we might just not know about. Yeah, it's it's I mean it's a big win and it's it's a unique situation and I could just see it now crossover, <laughs> The Bachelor, Jimmy Garoppolo edition. I mean, would it not be the best? I mean, the money would come in. Forget oh Subway, gosh. Jimmy. Yeah. Go to The Bachelor. That's the next evolution. Come on, guys. Yeah, but you know what happened if he went on The Bachelor? He definitely would have a pulled groin. But hey, <laughs> I'm here all week. Uh, anyway, so that's that's how it goes. <laughs> well, we'll see how it happens. But uh, always a fun discussion, guys. Now, does Taylor Swift bring the Chiefs Super Bowl magic? We'll talk about that in another episode when we talk about the Super Bowl. Matt, Ryan, David, and Jason, thank you so much for being with us. We'll be here with another show. Next time, we're going to talk about Lamar Jackson. Yes, Lamar Jackson, MVP, but how good is Lamar Jackson? We're going to talk about that on the next time here inside the Press Box. Gentlemen, we'll talk to you then. All right. For everybody here at Sports Knot, we appreciate you being with us. Do us a favor. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit that notifications bell. And don't forget, if you're looking for sports action, if you're looking for coverage, make sure you come up on sportsknot.com. Take care, everybody. <laughs>